OK, so I want to talk about two main themes. First of all, I want to examine the hierarchy of the courts with relation to the kind of work that each court does. And I want to make a distinction between trial courts and appellate courts as well. The second main theme that I want to look at in relation to the hierarchy of the courts is the centrality of the hierarchy to the doctrine of precedent. Now, let me say, first of all, also by means of an introduction to these themes, that they are quite complicated. There's a lot of detail here. And I think this is one of the problems that you always come across in trying to talk about the English legal system or the legal system of England and Wales. It's difficult to know quite where to start because everything is interrelated. So if I have to make some slight digressions to explain some of the terms as we go along, I think that might be a, a good way forward in terms of helping us to understand both these key themes about the hierarchy of the courts and also uh, uh, the connections between many of the ideas that I'm going to be talking about and some of the broader themes that run through this subject as well. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about relates to the kind of work that the courts do and also to an important distinction between the appellate courts, the courts that hear appeals, and the trial courts, the courts of first instance, if you like. Now, this is quite a complex distinction. I'm going to uh, return to it in a moment. And I think it's also fair to say, uh, because I don't want to mislead you, that what we're actually talking about when we talk about the work of the courts is not necessarily about a hierarchical relationship. What it's really about is a division of labour. In other words, a division of labour between the civil courts and the criminal courts. I think it fair to say that this division of labour is justified by a kind of specialisation. In other words, it streamlines, it makes the system, the, uh, the legal system, operate better if civil courts deal primarily with civil matters and criminal courts deal primarily with criminal matters. Now, once again, I have to almost pause and um, add another point in here. What we'll find when we look at these themes in detail in a moment is that none of these distinctions are hard and fast. In other words, what we will find when we look at the various courts is that courts can have both um, appellate and a trial jurisdiction and also a civil and a criminal jurisdiction, which obviously is a little bit confusing. Um, I'm sorry about that. That's just the way things are. I think if you sat down and tried to define or create a system of courts, uh, from logical first principles, you probably wouldn't end up with the system of courts that we have in the United Kingdom. This is in part, I think it reflects the history. It reflects the fact uh, that institutions of common law are historical. They change over time and change is often quite messy. So uh, this doesn't make for ease of uh, explanation, but I'm hoping that as we move forward, we can make these fundamental divisions. We can understand what these courts are doing and we will see a pattern emerging. Right, so I want to return to my first point which is, I suppose, the point I advertised about the division of labour, the distinction between the civil courts and the criminal courts. And let me just stress, what I'm talking about here is not strictly one of hierarchy. I'm going to come to that point in a moment. I'm going to make reference to some um, uh, descriptions of the courts, which I'll read out and then comment on any of the terms and show how all this material fits together. So I'm thinking, first of all, about civil courts. And I'm thinking about the distinction between civil courts and criminal courts. So, civil court cases arise when an individual or a business believes their rights have been infringed. Civil justice in England and Wales is mainly dealt with in the county courts, and in the case of more substantial or complex cases, the high court. The jurisdiction, this is a technical word which uh, relates to the kind of case a, a court can hear, the jurisdiction then of these civil courts covers a very wide range from quite small or simple claims, for example, damaged goods or recovery of debt, to large claims between multinational corporations. Civil cases involve hearings in open court, which the public may attend, hearings in the judge's private rooms, from which the public are excluded, and matters decided by the judge in private and on the basis of papers alone, in other words, without representation being made orally by lawyers or representatives. Courts in the civil jurisdiction don't have the power to imprison a losing party. Ordinarily, but not always, they award financial damages to the successful party, the size of which depends on the circumstances of the claim. OK, so that's an overview of the civil courts, primarily the county court and the high court. I'm going to come back to both of these courts in a moment and go into more detail. 
But there's also a point here that I think is important, and um, much later on I think I'll be talking about this idea. And this is the idea that um, the litigation, the matters that courts uh, deal with, is structured in a particular way. Uh, that's uh, true of civil courts and it's true of criminal courts. A theme I want to return to because what I want to talk about uh, for the moment is criminal courts and criminal cases so we can get our heads around this basic distinction between the kind of work that civil courts do and the kind of work that criminal courts do. So here's a statement about criminal courts. Criminal cases come to court after a decision has been made, usually by the Crown Prosecution Service, to prosecute somebody for an alleged crime. In the vast majority of cases, magistrates in the magistrate's court hear the evidence and, as a panel, make a decision on guilt or innocence. For more serious cases, a district judge, a uh, magistrate's court, or a circuit judge in the Crown Court will hear evidence. In the case of the latter, this will involve a jury trial. Very serious criminal cases, such as murder or rape, may be heard by a High Court judge in the High Court. OK, let me just remind you of what we're thinking about here. We're concerned with this fundamental distinction between civil and criminal courts, and this obviously maps onto a distinction between civil and criminal law. And I'm hoping that we've got some basic ideas there that allow us to understand this basic demarcation. What I want to do now is return to these themes in detail and explain that point I made a little bit earlier on, and that point is the complex one. The fact that although we're making a distinction between civil and criminal courts, we have to observe in detail that certain civil courts have uh, uh, jurisdiction over certain criminal cases and vice versa. We also need to study the fact that in relation to trial courts and appellate courts, in other words, courts that are trying cases and courts that are hearing appeals, the picture is also somewhat muddy, logical but muddy, to the extent that uh, the courts that we're looking at have both a trial jurisdiction, uh, in other words, they try cases, and an appellate jurisdiction. In other words, they hear appeals on cases. And with this basic toolkit of ideas, then, I want to look in more detail at the machinery of both the civil and the criminal courts.